Hi everyone, this is Maverick Poir, the Chemistry Guru. Now in this video, we want to go through an interesting concept in kinetics, which is on pseudo-first order reactions. Now let's have an example involving pseudo-first order reaction, given a reaction is first order with respect to a reactant A, and also first order with respect to reactant B. Then for a given experiment, where the concentration of A is 0.01 mol per dm cube, and the concentration of B is 0.50 mol per dm cube, half-life was determined to be 10 minutes. So the question is, what is the new half-life when the concentration of B is changed to 1 mole per dm cube? Now let's try to write out the rate equation for this reaction first. We know that it is first order with respect to A. We also know that it is first order with respect to B. So therefore, writing out the rate equation shouldn't be a problem. I can write this as the rate equals to a rate constant K multiplied by concentration of A power 1 because it is first order with respect to A, multiply by concentration of B power 1 because it is also first order with respect to B. So if I look at this expression, then what is interesting is I know that this is an overall order 2 reaction because it is first order with respect to A and first order with respect to B. So overall, it is an order 2 reaction. But the question is asking us about half-life when I change the concentration of B, which is a bit weird because in syllabus, we only are required to determine the half-life of first-order reactions. We know that for first-order reactions, half-life is a constant and is given by a formula. Half-life is equal to ln 2 over rate constant k. We don't calculate half-lives for second-order reaction or third-order reactions. So in this case, if I know that this is an overall order 2 reaction and you want me to determine the half-life of a reaction which is not a first order reaction, then we kind of get stuck. So what this question is trying to suggest to us is we want to change it into an overall order one reaction so that half-life is a constant and we can determine half-life. The idea essentially is that, so the concept of pseudo first order reaction comes in. Now for pseudo first order reactions, there are in general two criteria that we look out for. The first criteria is where we have an excess reactant. So we either have an excess reactant or we have a catalyst. Now for criteria number one, when one of the reactant is in excess, as the reaction proceeds, the change in the amount of the reactant is negligible, so therefore the concentration of the reactant is constant. So therefore, the concentration of this reactant is constant. Now for criteria two, if I have a catalyst involved, we know that catalyst is chemically unchanged at the end of the reaction, so therefore the concentration of the catalyst would also remain constant. So therefore, if it is catalyst, we will expect the concentration of this catalyst would be also a constant as the reaction proceeds. So for pseudo first order reaction, we only need to look out for either one of them. So let's look back at the question and see which one of these criteria is applicable. So if I compare the concentration of A, in this case is 0.01. The concentration of B, you notice it is a lot bigger. It is 0.50 mole per dm cube, which is 50 times more than the concentration of A. So we will focus on this portion here. You notice the concentration of B is in excess. So coming back to here, if I have the rate equation equals to K concentration of A power 1 and concentration of B power 1, and we say that the concentration of B is much bigger than the concentration of A because it is in large excess. As the reaction proceeds, the change in amount of B is negligible. So therefore, the concentration of B is a constant term. So if it is constant, then what this means is the K value is a constant and the concentration of B is also a constant. So I can combine these two terms together. So therefore, my rate equation will now look something like this. It becomes a new K value, K prime, concentration of A, where K prime, which is this term here, is equals to K multiplied by concentration of B. So we can put it here where the k prime is equal to the original rate constant k multiplied by the concentration of B. So what I have now is originally this was an order 2 reaction where I cannot determine half-life because half-life is not a constant. Now I make it into an overall order 1 reaction. So now half-life becomes a constant and so therefore I can determine the half-life. So this is what we mean by a pseudo first order reaction because this reaction actually it is not order 1 but I make it look like order 1 so that it is easier for me to find half-life. So once I know that this is over order one, then I know that half-life is a constant. 
So half-life is a constant, t half is equals to ln 2 over this new rate constant, k prime. But we want to substitute this original value of k prime back into this expression. So this is equal to ln 2 over the original rate constant, k, multiplied by the concentration of b. So at this stage here, what we notice is half-life is equal to ln 2, which is a constant term, over k, which is also a constant term, but it is inversely related to b. So therefore, when I vary the concentration of b, half-life would be affected. So therefore, half-life is inversely related to the concentration of b. Based on this expression here, once we have this outcome, then what I can do is I can compare the half-life given inside this question at two different concentrations of b, and I can determine the half-life at a new concentration. So back to this question, we say that when the concentration of B is 0.5 mol per dm cube, half-life is 10 minutes. So when I increase the concentration of B to 1 mol per dm cube, what would the new half-life be? So let's try to put this together. So I know that when the concentration of B is 0.5 mol per dm cube, half-life is 10 minutes. This is given inside this question. Now what happens when I increase the concentration of B to 1 mol per dm cube? So effectively, what I'm doing is I'm doubling the concentration of B, right? So if I compare concentration of B 0.5 to 1 mol per dm cube, actually I'm doubling the concentration of B. So what this means is I will expect, based on this expression, half-life is inversely related to concentration of B when concentration for B double, half-life will decrease by two times. So I will expect the half-life to be affected by a factor of half times so therefore, the expected half-life should be 5 minutes. So in this case, we will expect when I double the concentration of B from 0.5 to 1 mol per dm cube, the half-life would decrease from 10 minutes to 5 minutes. Alright, I hope that this video will help us better understand the concept of pseudo-first-order reactions. Now remember, if you suspect, we need to use pseudo-first-order reaction concept. There are only two criteria. We only need one of them to be fulfilled. We look out for either an excess reactant, so therefore the concentration of the reactant is a constant, or we look out for a catalyst, and the concentration of the catalyst is a constant, and we combine this constant term into the rate constant k, and we make it into a new rate constant k prime. And usually the expression will be condensed to a first order reaction, and we know that half life is a constant, and we can find half life subsequently. Now, if you learned something useful from this video, please subscribe to my YouTube channel for more weekly video lessons. That's all for now. Thanks for watching.